Good evening, good evening, good evening, Facebook family. Good evening. How y'all doing out there? It's your kingdom couple. Right. Yes, yours truly, Doc Stan and Lady D. And uh, we bring you- Kingdom couple practicing kingdom love. Kingdom couple practicing <laughs> kingdom love, boy, I tell you. That's right. That's it, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Listen, we're glad to be with y'all on this uh, Thursday night. Yes. And uh, let me hit all my buttons here and get stuff going. So come on in here and tell your family, your friends, and like I always say, even your foes. Amen. But come on in here and join in on tonight and yes. uh, and let's do this thing. And uh, we're Amen. excited to be with you again on tonight. Uh, we're coming uh, to you from yes. our home here in the village facility of Arlington. Yes. Amen. It's the kingdom uh, embassy. This is the kingdom studio. Amen. And uh, here in our home. And uh, so thank you for joining us on tonight. If, and if you join us for the first time and uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, we believe you being for a treat, not because of us or anything we say, but what the spirit of God will say to you That's through right. us. That's right. And, uh, and so have something uh, to write down, take you some notes, Amen. And whatever the case may be. And I believe Amen. the spirit of God want to speak to you, want to talk to you, want to help you right where you are. And, uh, and so, and if you've been with us for any given time, again, thank you for joining us again. And mm -hmm. why don't you, whatever the state may be, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, share our page yes. on your timeline with others. Yes. And if you're viewing this on uh, YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. And I will appreciate it so very much. And uh, um, uh, so anyway, uh, we've been talking about uh, for the ooh, for last few months, couple months, we were talking about you know, rekindling uh, your fire of desire and passion uh, for your spouse. And that's led us to talk about several different things. And so mm -hmm. last time, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, how to recover that, how, how to gather yourself. And uh, we speak it to those that are, are married mm -hmm. and struggling, and those that have been married, trying to recover, regroup. And then those of you that's just out there dating and uh, in preparation to get married, First of all, I tell you, you need to call me and set up an appointment <laughs> and do some premarital counseling. And uh, just so you yeah. know, uh, make sure you work some overtime before you do, because it ain't free. <laughs> all right. All right. You got to make an investment in your life and your marriage. It's worth it, though. And, uh, it and, and whatnot, you know, because buying a wedding cake, that ain't no investment. Wedding dress, that ain't no investment. Right. You know, and uh, because none of that stuff really adds to your relationship. But the information you need, that's an investment and it's worth it. Right. Paying for because the Bible tells us to do that by wisdom, by knowledge, by understanding, and Amen. sell it not. So, mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, uh, so we're talking to everybody, whatever your status is, your relationship status is, the things we're talking about uh, are pertinent to you or relevant to your everyday mm -hmm. life. But tonight, we're going to talk about uh, something that's very important to, to forgiveness. And uh, because the last few broadcasts, we've been talking about the importance of forgiveness and, uh, and how to forgive and why to forgive. Mm -hmm. and, and what that looked like, and uh, and we'll look at a couple of things yeah. uh, along that line. And uh, but tonight we're gonna we're gonna dive into uh, a key component that makes forgiveness possible. And we're gonna talk about unconditional love, mm. and uh, we're gonna talk about the God kind of love. Mm. And uh, so we 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 we're talking about uh, uh, talking to believers, and I'm sure we're probably talking to the non-believers and. Uh, and it's, listen, yeah. if, you, if you say, well, I already know this stuff, whatever we're going to say, you know, then share it with a friend, share it with somebody, yeah. you know, and uh, don't let it always be about you. And uh, sometimes you need, you need to learn from somebody else so you can help somebody else live a better life. That's true. And uh, so that's what wise people do. Excuse me. That's what mature people do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so listen, uh, so we're going to talk about unconditional love uh, on tonight and why. So, so I want to read a passage of scripture <clears throat> uh, because Unconditional love and forgiveness go together. You know, it, 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 it requires an understanding of unconditional love and it requires uh, love to be at the foundation of your life in order for you to forgive. And, and as you've already talked about that forgiveness, you know, is about freeing yourself, mm -hmm. keeping yourself free. So we're going to learn some very powerful things about forgiveness and unconditional love. You know, and uh, uh, love that's not based upon conditions, you know, and uh, so, so very important because uh, uh, let me let me um, read my uh, principle 
again, you know, that I, I, I gave people a principle last time. Let me turn on this side of the paper and, and take it up. Uh, I just want to read my key statement. So what you got, baby? So baby, before you read that, I want you to really, really think about yourself. Because as you read, mm -hmm. I'm also doing a self-assessment on myself, oh, yeah. which all of us should be doing. Yeah. So unconditional love, unconditional love that is not conditional, as simple as it may sound, that's what it is. Love that is not circumstantial. Under certain circumstances, you practice love. Other yeah. circumstances, you don't practice love. So yeah. while my honey is reading, really don't think about your spouse. Think about yourself. Are you really practicing unconditional love? Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Mama. You know, and and I, I want to lay this out from the context of the kingdom of God. And so, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more specific uh, in, in my approach, in my context, in the context, because, you know, um, we, we hear a lot of subject about love, unconditional love. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes we, we, we talk about it in, in a humanistic way or from a, just a human perspective. But I want to talk about it from, from the original perspective. I want to talk about it from um, uh, the kingdom of God perspective, because this is very important. So this is, this yeah. is kingdom love. Because, and I'm talking to people in the kingdom of God. So I'm talking to saved people. If you're saved, you got to understand something. You know, outside of the kingdom of God, everything is redefined and not redefined mm -hmm. accurately. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I want, I want to make very, very clear that what we're going to talk about, that this is what it takes to operate in the kingdom of God. Yeah. So you got to see forgiveness as a key component to your kingdom walk, mm -hmm. to your relationship being based upon the kingdom of God. Yeah. And, and, and what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God simply... And there's a lot of things we can say about, but in this teaching, we, we're going to just narrow it down to this one statement. The kingdom of God is simply learning how to govern in your life based upon God's standard. Hmm. Hmm. Another word for it is called righteousness. You see, and so when I talk about the kingdom of God, know that I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about the rituals. I'm not hmm. talking about church stuff. I'm talking about uh, pure standard of God. And so, so understand that when I'm talking about it. So when I say, so people say the kingdom of God, you know, that can sound so deep and so forth. No, we, we're basically saying that the kingdom of God simply means the government of God. Yeah. And so we're talking about governing your life and governing your relationship on the standards that God uses in his kingdom for himself and anything in it. Mm. And so if we're going to operate in the kingdom of God, and out of relationship, out of our relationship, mm -hmm. we have got to use that same standard or measurement or ruler to govern our relationship and to govern our lives. And so I want you to see forgiveness and, and, and love from that perspective. We're talking about mm -hmm. kingdom love, the real love, the pure love. When, when, I, when I talk about this, this feeling love mm -hmm. that people got out there because kingdom love is not a feeling. And Lady D, gonna, she's going to read some things probably in, in, in uh, Corinthians 13. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not about feelings. That's right. And so real love takes faith. That's right. Oh, yeah. It takes faith and maturity. Especially if you're going to do it unconditionally. Yeah. It takes faith. It takes faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, so real love, kingdom love, the Bible says, worketh by faith, worketh by love. That's right. So watch this. Now I want you to start seeing love and forgiveness as co-laborers, as twins hmm. connected. Because watch this. You cannot walk in love and not walk in forgiveness. Hmm. And you cannot walk in forgiveness and not walk in love. Impossible. That is so true. They are different but they are twins, mm. Siamese twin. And Siamese twin mean two things, two different yeah. entities tied together. They feed off of each other. And this is why this is so very important. And see, and so the reason people can't love, people can't forgive rather, is because they're not loving themselves. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm gonna say it again. I'm, I'm gonna go slow. And and I and I was gonna try to wrap this up tonight. I already know we ain't gonna wrap this up oh tonight. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we ain't gonna wrap but this you know, up. When you start talking about love, because we we talked about forgiveness, but now yeah. so many people misinterpret love. Yeah. So this is this is a broad subject, but you you gotta bring it out, baby, so people can get a better understanding yeah. of what unconditional love is and kingdom love. Yeah. That's what so we're talking about in the about. kingdom. Listen to me, mm -hmm. listen to all of you people out there. You say you're in the kingdom, but you're not experiencing kingdom life because you're not walking in the love that governs the kingdom of God. You're walking in this other love that you just come that people have come up with, that the culture and society yeah. has come up with and call it love. Yeah. And it's not love. You know, and it's listen, and it's got to be deeper than uh uh uh, uh eros. That yeah. there is a expression of love. Then you got uh uh you got uh, uh phileo. That's brotherly love. Mm -hmm. Everybody can walk in that. Yeah. But everybody can't walk in agape. Mm -hmm. That's the love of the kingdom. Now these other loves, uh aspects and expression of love, they're of the kingdom too, but they're not deep enough. The kingdom of God is not built upon the kingdom of God is not built upon eros. Mm -hmm. Eros is about your feelings. The kingdom of God is not based up, built upon uh, phileo. Even though when you, you know, you're fulfilled for that, that means just love for, for humanity, for other people, just, just a general basic care for other people. But this agape love, mm. the kingdom of God is based upon this, is built upon this one. Because this agape love is, 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 um, is uh, uh, foundational. This is what we call eros love and phileo love. They're really not separate loves. They are the fruits mm. of agape love. Mm. They're not the source. They're, they're, they're fruit. They're byproduct. Yeah. And so we're not playing that down. But you need the foundation. Because agape love is a foundation. Because, listen, that, that's going to work at all times. But agape starts with God and yourself. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. Eros and phileo, that's about you and others. Mm. Agape is about you and God. And then you're able to share with others. But you could be an Eros and Phileo and not be an Agape, yeah. which means you can have things going well between you and somebody else. You, you got all these feelings that go on between you and somebody else, but then what's going on between you and God? Now I need you to understand something, that forgiveness is about you and God, mm -hmm. like Agape love is. Mm -hmm. See, because if you can't forgive, walk in forgiveness, mm -hmm. you can't have things right between you and God. That's right. And so things ain't going to be right between you and your spouse. That's right. And that's the key. See, the key between us mm -hmm. is what's going on between me and God. If I can walk in this thing with God, then I can walk in it with her that's and right. vice versa. And she do the same. Mm -hmm. That's why you need to understand it from this context and from this premises is that you got to understand that there's a lot at stake when it comes to forgiveness and when it comes to agape love or, or as like to be called practically unconditional love. So agape is unconditional love, mm -hmm. which means as you say, baby, it's not situational. Mm -hmm. It's not circumstantial base. That's right. You see, and, uh, and if you can't walk in that between you and God, then we're gonna see in the scriptures that some things that, that cannot happen for you. Mm -hmm. That's some thing that your relationship cannot have, why? And you're gonna see why. I'm gonna answer that question in a minute. Or why? Why is that? You know, when I share some things, mm -hmm. and uh, and so let me let me read my statement again, my opening statement again. Uh, uh, and we are already twenty minutes in. I'm still opening. Wow. Right. Already twenty minutes in. When, when I'm gonna open. Listen. So remember this about, about about love and forgiveness. Let's look at them from the perspective of a principles. Let's look at love and forgiveness as principles. Uh, from the principal perspective, but forgiveness and love are beyond principle. Mm. Forgiveness is a person, just like love is a person. Mm. Well, yeah. See, not it, so. So it, it's both. See, not only does God have love, the Bible said God is love. That's right. So watch this. So not only is forgiveness something that we can give, 
Forgiveness is also something that we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, we're, we are the personification of love and forgiveness or not. And uh, but from a principle perspective, know this: that principles are greater than people. Yeah. And when you can walk in the principle of 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 forgiveness and love, and understand that it's about the person that you are, then you understand the power of forgiveness and the power of love, because love is about your person, mm -hmm. forgiveness is about your person. And so guess what? When you do not love or when you do not forgive, you're allowing people to stop you as a person. That's true. That's and when they can stop you as a person, guess what? You become a person with no power. Hmm. That's why you, you got to understand this because you can't, you can't allow your experiences with people stop you from loving and stop you from forgiving. Why? Because when people can stop you from loving and stop you from forgiving, they can stop you from being the person yeah. that you are, that That's God right. wants you to be. That's right. I'm hesitating because I'm just giving people time things to sink in. I'm trying to go slow. That's my way of going slow because <laughs> I can talk fast and, and what else. So I'm just trying to go slow. So it's important. So I need you to see that these principles of, of love and forgiveness, what's at stake is your personhood. You cannot be the person that God created you to be and not love and then not be in forgiveness. Sure. Can't happen. So for all of you out there who think that, that you can be this great person in the kingdom of God and walk in forg unforgiveness, you are sad and mistaken. Mm -hmm. All of you out there who think that you can be this great man of God, great woman of God in the kingdom of God and not walk in the love of God, you are sadly, sadly mistaken. So I'm talking to the preachers, I'm talking to the people, I'm talking to the babies, I'm talking to everybody. We all need to get this. And we listen, and some of you already know this. So tonight, it's just a reminder. Because yeah. sometimes we got to be reminded of what we already know. Yeah. You know, but may not be practicing because we all in our feelings. That's right. And so watch this. So this forgiveness. And this love gonna require you to move from your feelings mm -hmm. and get over into your faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, and to get over into your faith and to move from your feelings, you've got to get some understanding. And so, with that being said, we're gonna look at a, a couple of scriptures here. And uh, uh, and so, I want to start with with uh, Matthew chapter five. That it seems like I'm gonna read a verse that seems like it ain't gonna make. You said, "What it got to do with forgiveness? What it got to do with love?" I'm going to connect the dots. Trust me, I'm going to connect it. But I want you to see something, the context. That love and forgiveness were key things that Jesus taught at the beginning of a discipleship training. Mm -hmm. That's how important it is. That when Jesus began to disciple, teach his disciples and train them in the ways of the kingdom, Forgiveness and love were a part of that initial training. See, why? Because they had learned the opposite. Hmm. They had learned that they can treat people any kind of way. They can not walk in love as long as they were fulfilling all of their rituals. Hmm. But Jesus said something to the disciples one of the first thing he says to them as he began to teach him is he began to address the way they thought mm -hmm. about everything. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing he did was he started with what we call, you know, theologically, they call the Beatitudes. Yeah. See, the first thing he addressed when he's teaching the kingdom of God, he had addressed their attitude. Because if you look at, uh, actually, before I look at chapter five of Matthew, look at verse number, chapter four, uh, verse number 17, to lay this context. And, 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 and I, I just, just stay with me. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm laying the foundation of, of, of how this is connected to the kingdom. That's the only reason I'm doing this, because uh, I need you to see this. Because people thinking 
you know, love and forgiveness, those just isolated subject, but now, but, but the Holy Spirit in my studying today really began to show me saying that you need to emphasize how, how much weight this carries in the kingdom, hmm. that the kingdom of God in your life and a kingdom life is at stake when you get stuck in unforgiveness and not walk in love. That's true. And when they began to deal with me about that, man, I was like, oh, wow. I was, oh, wow. That's wow. True. And uh, so feel the way. So watch this. It says, now Jesus is just now beginning his public ministry. He's just now teaching. Launching his ministry. And the first thing he says, change your mind. Mm. Set. Look at it. Matthew 4, verse 17. It says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. Stop right there. Change the way you're thinking. Listen, y'all, that's the first thing that has to happen. If you're going to have a kingdom marriage, if you're going to have a royal marriage, if you're going to have a marriage that's based upon the kingdom of God and, and the way God intended it, because marriage comes from the kingdom of God. That's right. You got to change the way you think. You got you, you to gotta ask yourself, am I thinking like the kingdom of God is thinking when it comes to marriage? Or am I thinking and practicing like the world? That's it. Or how I was taught? Because maybe the way you were taught was not the kingdom way. Yeah. I know I learned that. Yeah. It was not the kingdom way. And guess what? Right. You're touching me, baby. Oh, girl, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm touching. Yeah. Watch this. <laughs> You know, chapter five don't tell us that. Mm. That it's either the kingdom of God or the kingdom of men. Well, thank you. There you go. But I want you to see that he says, Jesus said, listen, repent. Change the course of your thinking. Change the way you think. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's right. Wow. The kingdom of God wants to do something in your life and in your marriage mm -hmm. and through your marriage yeah. But you've got to be willing to change the way you think. See, a lot of y'all think your spouse needs to change, and they do. Mm -hmm. But guess what, y'all? Mm -hmm. So do you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, you can only change you. You can't change them. If you change your way of thinking according to the kingdom of God, then you let the kingdom of God in your marriage, in your relationship, the kingdom of God will influence your spouse Amen. better than you, can ever, you ever can. That's right. That's so right. release, release the kingdom of God into your marriage, into your relationship right now by the way you think. Mm -hmm. And baby, we have to trust that because sometimes we get into our feelings and feel like, well, Lord, you're not moving fast enough. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. And I, I just, you're not moving fast enough for me. So you got to trust that. Work on you. Allow the kingdom to become real in you so it can work through you. Yeah. And eventually it will happen. It will happen. Yeah. And listen, and trusting comes from understanding. That's right. That's very true. The more you understand something, the more you trust. That's right. The, the, the less you understand, the, the, the less, less you, you trust. trust. So if you don't trust the process, it's because you lack understanding. That's why the Bible said, with all that getting, getting get an understanding. understanding. Why? And so what I'm doing now is giving you understanding Amen. of the connection between love and forgiveness and the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Love and forgiveness and the kingdom. Listen, your kingdom inheritance is at stake yeah. when it comes to love and forgiveness. And I don't know about you, I can't afford to hold up what the kingdom has for me because I'm stuck in my feeling and I can't get away in faith so I can get into forgiveness and walk in love. So true. So See? true. And guess what? If you can't get over in faith and stuck in your feelings, guess what? You can't please God because without faith, it's impossible, it's impossible to please God. To please God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what does faith do? Faith will cause you to walk in forgiveness and in love. Why? Because yeah. none of you deserve it. That's true. But we deserve the freedom that it has for us. Mm -hmm. We deserve to receive what heaven has for us. So give yourself a fighting chance, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and push through your feelings. So, so the first thing Jesus said is that change the way you think. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the kingdom of heaven standing ready. The kingdom of heaven is hoovering over your life, over your marriage, waiting to land in your marriage, to land in your life, but it's waiting on you to change the way you think. So in practical terms, he's saying, if you keep thinking like you thinking, yeah. you're going to keep having what you're having and the kingdom is blocked in your life. Yep. At the end of the day, you've got to change the way you think, gotta the change. way you operate. Yep. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, now let's take that verse and tie it over into uh, Matthew chapter five. So, so remember, so Jesus, he's now launching his ministry and now he's going to start teaching the disciples. And so his first lesson with the disciples in chapter five, and let's pick it up in verse number one. And, uh, 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 but if you notice in the first few verses of chapter five, he kept using the word blessed, blessed, blessed. See, now he's, he's, he's reintroducing to them the blessed life. The kingdom life is the blessed life. The blessed life is the kingdom life. And Jesus goes through that. He's showing them all these things about the blessed life. Okay? And it says in verse number two of chapter five, it says, and he opened his mouth and taught them saying. And we're going to fast forward here and talk about one particular verse. And we're going to talk about everything he said, but he starts saying things. And here's one key thing he said to the disciples, verse number 20. He says, uh, actually, let's look at verse number 19. He said, whosoever therefore shall break, um, Yeah, okay, I'm just looking at other verses if I want to read that, but 5 and 19 says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, another word for commandment is principles. He said, now I'm teaching you principles of the kingdom. I'm teaching you the government of the kingdom. I'm teaching you how the kingdom governs itself. And you got to understand that when you break the least of these commandments, he says, he said, whoever break the least of these principles and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. By God. Mm. He's anybody who, who break the least and teach people to break the least of the principle in the kingdom shall be called the least in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But look what it says. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Mm. What comes before teaching? You got to do it do first. It. Listen to me, preachers. Mm. He, please hear me. Whosoever shall do and teach. See, it says, I can't teach you until I start doing myself. How can you try to teach somebody about having a godly marriage and loving your wife the way Christ loved the church when you're not doing it? Mm, how? Mm, mm. How do you do that with mm. an honest face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hit, so, been, I mean, you disconnected, man. not disconnected. Well, not learning how to connect it yeah. to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people out there thinking, you know, we're just human and they don't connect to the kingdom. No, you, you can't. He said, you got to be doing. I think a lot of people believe is that real life, baby. That's true. I really like, really and I ain't nobody perfect. So that ain't real. That ain't real. That ain't, ain't real. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. It's real. It is. Jesus did it. <laughs> he died to make it possible for you and I to do it. But here's how it's done. You got to change the way you think. That's it. That's See, it. believing that you can do something has to do with your mentality. That's right. Why would God tell you to do something that you can't do? That's right. We can't do it on our own. No, you can't sure. do it on That's why it's by faith. Oh, yes. yes faith yes. is the enablement of God. That's right. That's what faith is. Yeah. It's not a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's learning how to, how to work. Uh, out of the power of God, from the power of God, within the power of God. That's what faith is. It's the God kind of ability mm -hmm. activated in you. You've got to release it. You've got to activate it. Mm -hmm. And faith is activated by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. This is the word of God I'm telling you tonight. Mm -hmm. As you hear the word of God, it should activate your faith and get you out your feelings. I know you hurt. I know they were wrong. They were terrible. They did terrible things to you, but that's beside the point. Your faith and the principle of God are more powerful than any pain That's right. that any person has mm -hmm. brought into your life. Yeah. I'm trying to get you free. Mm -hmm. Stop excusing yourself. Stop making excuses. You know, and, and, and that's not making light of what people said and did. Mm -hmm. 
or didn't do or didn't say or whatever the case may be. That's not making light of it. That's for you to understand that there's something greater than, than what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. And that's the word of God in faith, forgiveness, and love. That's where you're going to find your freedom in. And you got to start applying it to yourself before you can teach it and apply it to others. And so this is why I'm able to teach because I'm able to walk in it. Have I mastered it completely? No, I'm better than I have been and getting better. It's a journey. But it's my doing that qualifies me to teach it. That's right. That's why I tell preachers, stop teaching stuff that you ain't living. Hmm. Stop teaching what you ain't doing. This ain't about being perfect. You know what you practice and what you're not practicing. Don't teach stuff that you ain't practicing. Yeah. Why? Because you piling up stuff against you when you do that. Hmm. Man, that, 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 that mountain of hypocrisy is getting bigger and bigger. You better off just saying, keep your mouth shut. Say, man, I, I'm working on some things right now. I can't talk about that. I can't help you with that right now. True. Let's talk about something else I can help you with. Mm -hmm. You see, and, and uh, so watch this. So he says, he says, those who, who, who teach, who do and teach, it says the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. See, this is who's great in the kingdom. Those who do the principles of, of the kingdom and those who teach others. Mm. Wow. Mm. That means everybody can be great. That's true. See. The kingdom of God does not use the word the standard of the world to determine who's great. This is the kingdom, the standard of determining who's great. Okay. Not how many members you got, not how many degrees you got, how much money you got. It has nothing to do with anything external. It has to do with the kingdom of God and his principle and your relationship with them mm -hmm. that determines whether or not you're great in the kingdom or you're least in the kingdom. Because he says, there are people that are least in the kingdom. That's right. Why? You're in the kingdom, but you ain't, you ain't doing. But you're telling folks, you're teaching, you ain't doing. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm talking to you, preacher. Mm -hmm. I know you hear me, bishop, apostle, mm -hmm. whoever you call yourself, you know, I'm not down you. But I'm in your face tonight. Yep, yep. If we interviewed your wife, what would she say? If we interviewed your husband, what, what would he, he say? say? That's that's right. See? That's very true. And uh, and let me tell you, this is real, y'all. Yeah. You don't understand that your, your marriage relationship mirrors your marriage relationship with God mm -hmm. and your ministry. But even if on the outside, it looks successful, on the inside, is mm -hmm. it really successful? Because you may have a mega ministry yeah. and you and your wife sleeping in separate beds. That's a problem. Man, that kind of mess is going on. Yeah. You know, all that unforgiveness in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, all that unforgiveness in the church. That's true. In the community. Come on, y'all. We got to get this. I, 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 you know, listen. Even as a, as a, as a, as a community, we know that some races have treated other races bad. We know that, yeah. but we got to walk in forgiveness and love. Mm -hmm. That's not approving racism. That's not letting racism off the hook. That's keeping racism from putting you in prison, That's in right. your mind and spirit. That's right. That's right. I'm not gonna let a racist imprison me because I'm going to have hatred in my heart. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to read a scripture in a minute. Mm -hmm. If we get to it, I don't know if we're going to get to it tonight, but... And you're going to get to it, baby. But honestly, not tonight. Already what I'm know. thinking, <laughs> let God be God. Vengeance is mine, yeah. said the Lord. Just let him be God. Yeah. I mean, you in a relationship, because yeah. that vengeance is so much That's in a relationship. Right. You know, stop, so much. stop take, trying to take vision. Let, listen, it, let it be God. Yes. That's God. God be God. And trust that he is God. God will handle he that is. way with husband. That's right. God will handle that knucklehead wife. That's right. <laughs> That's yeah, right. don't y'all get me started. Yeah. Oh, like my dad would say, brickhead. Yeah. Yeah, you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You got to believe in the power of the principles right. and the person of God in your person, in your life. Yeah. And, and stop thinking about they getting away. They're not getting away. Mm -mm. No. 
Let me tell you something. Forgiveness and love gets you out of the way. That's right. So That's God can right. get them. That's right. And the thing is, though, baby, we say God is going to get them. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, mm -hmm. but life gets them. Yeah. Because there's a law in motion here. And that's how God does it. He yeah. uses life. He life. uses things around you. You don't come and get to yourself. You right. use things around you. He let right. the dogs out on you. I'm telling you. <laughs> so just so to speak. focus on you. Focus on you. It works. Yeah. And trust me, you'll be so much happier than trying to keep up with your spouse and mistreat them. Right. Because it makes you miserable. Mm -hmm. When you try to get back at them, focus on you. Let God be God in your life. And trust me, everything will work out. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Look at verse number 20. So he says, tell the disciples, you got to value the principles of the kingdom of God. Verse number 20 says this. For I say unto you that accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, mm -hmm. you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. That's two righteousness, y'all. The righteousness of God and the righteousness of man. Yeah. Let me put it to you in another way. He says this. He said, for except your standard is of the kingdom of God, shall exceed the standards of the kingdom of men. You shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, there's a, there's a, there's a kingdom of men and the kingdom of God. There's the righteousness of men and the righteousness of God. See, the righteousness of men is what you learn from your religious group. You learn from your mom and them. You learn from your family. You learn all these things and whatever. But then he said, now I need you to understand that your standard of living must be based upon the righteousness of the kingdom of God, not the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Who are the scribes and Pharisees? They are the religious people of the day who operate according to rituals and customs mm -hmm. and culture of men or the kingdom of men. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, now you're in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom of God is not about religion. It's about relationship. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you're, going, if you're going to operate in relation with other people in the kingdom of God, you got to use the kingdom of God standard right. and not the standard of your religious group. Mm -hmm. Because the scribes and the Pharisees, those are people who knew the scriptures. Mm -hmm. They went to church. That's they right. did all the rituals. They sure did. But they were so unforgiving. They were so unloving. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, and you think you're working for God and you're not. Mm -hmm. Please hear me on this. Right. You cannot. You got to choose. Am I going to use the righteousness of God, which means the God's standard of doing things, or am I going to use the righteousness of men or my religious righteousness, which is called self-righteousness? Mm -hmm. hmm. Or I'm going to use the righteousness that's of the spirit of God. The righteousness that, of the spirit of God is beyond your feelings. It requires faith. Mm -hmm. But the right. righteousness based upon your selfishness, it don't require faith. All you need is your feelings. Mm. Right. See, I, I want to lay this foundation tonight mm -hmm. for love and forgiveness. I thought I'm going to get more into the love, but, but I, you need to get this, this foundation right. because you need to understand. And so when I talk about certain things about forgiveness and love, you're going to understand why. Because the kingdom requires it. So mm -hmm. if you're going to have a kingdom marriage, which means a life based upon the kingdom of God yes. where both of y'all are royalty. Mm -hmm. You're a royal couple, mm -hmm. king and queen. Mm -hmm. You had to use the principles of the kingdom. That's right. See, Because the enemy doesn't want you to be the king that you are, brother. Mm -hmm. The enemy doesn't want you to be the queen that you are, woman of God. See why? So he wants y'all to misunderstand is why. So y'all can treat each other unlike a king or unlike a queen mm -hmm. and then you have witnesses yeah. you have the children yeah the children witnessing this foolishness and they know you go to church every sunday we supposed to be christians but this is how we're acting and they will mimic that behavior they really will so this is more serious than a lot of us i mean thank god i'm getting better 
because trust me, I'm I'm getting better. We all are. I was I was on the other side at one point too, but I'm learning better and I'm doing better because I want to be better. I want to do better. I want to please God. So I am getting better, but we got to remember our children are witnessing this behavior. And honestly, at the end of the day, it's hypocritical. It really is because they learning too. They know how uh, uh, God operate and how love is supposed to be shared between people and they're not seeing that. Yeah. And listen, we can, listen, we're not throwing on rocks at anybody. Because right. we right there with you. We we're can, not, we we're, learning, we're yeah. doing better. We're not looking down yeah. on nobody, but I'm just being bold and telling you the truth. That's true. And you Because we have to true. remind ourselves every day. Yeah. Because sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way. Sometimes <laughs> she's feeling some kind of way. You know, not just about uh, each other, but about other people. I'm sure he feels some kind of way about me more than I feel some kind of well, way about I him. I don't know about that. I ain't keeping on record, well, so I don't know. Some, some of us <laughs> are further along than others, okay? The point I'm trying so, to make is, is work for everybody. That's right. That's so right. No, there's nobody going to sit around and say, you know, we got it all together. No, no, no. Let's work for everybody. No. Yeah. But we're free to talk about it because we're transparent yeah. and then we're applying and we're walking in it. So we're not pointing no fingers at nobody. That's you know, right. and then, listen, we just give you tools to work with. Right. right. You know, and we have developed at a point where we can help others because the Bible says this, when you are converted, then you go strengthen others. So That's we've right. gone through the conversion process mm -hmm. as individuals, as a couple, right. and now we're here to strengthen you. Yeah. So don't let the enemy put condemnation on you. Mm -hmm. Or make you feel it's hopeless. because it's, it's not, not hopeless. hopeless. I know it's yeah, bad. It's not. Mm -hmm. And it hurts, but it's not hopeless. That's right. Why? Because the power of God mm -hmm. is greater than your pain. That's true. God's That's power true. is greater than your pain. And God's power is released through his principles, his word, and more specifically, the principle and the personality of forgiveness and love, yeah. kingdom love, unconditional love. That's and so true. with that being said, we're going to end it on tonight. And we're going to pick up next time right here. And uh, we're going to come back and read uh, chapter five. And then we're going to look at a couple other verses and tie them in in chapter number six, you know, and uh, understand that, listen, you owe it to yourself mm -hmm. to walk in kingdom love. You, you owe it to yourself to walk in forgiveness. Why? These are keys of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you want to release your life mm -hmm. of kingdom in the earth. Because Jesus said, listen, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. I'm talking about two of them tonight. Yeah. Forgiveness and love, he says. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you the keys. That's right. Are you ready to free yourself, mm -hmm. free your relationship? Or do you want to keep yourself bound mm -hmm. and keep your, your relationship bound? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to come out of prison? See, you, you, you got to come out individually. Until you can come out individually, you cannot come out as a couple. That's right. And listen, if you choose to come out of the prison of unforgiveness and the prison of hatred and vengeance and bitterness, but your, proud, your spouse choose to stay in prison, mm -hmm. you can't do nothing about that. Mm -hmm. But love them from the outside. Mm -hmm. Love them from the, from, from the place of freedom. Right. Is what I mean by the outside. Love them from a place of freedom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't leave. Mm -hmm. You know, let God yeah. do his thing. Mm -hmm. And what happens, happens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's not teaching for tonight. One, thank you for joining us mm -hmm. on the night. We pray that the word, you know, yes. been a blessing to you as it has been a blessing to us because mm -hmm. as we teach it, we also learn it. Yes. And uh, and it's an ever learning journey and process. And uh, no matter how good it is. It can get better. get better. No matter how bad it is, right. it can get better. Yeah. You got to bleed, but you got to bleed right. in the word of God and work mm -hmm. in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We appreciate you. Got anything you yes. want to say, baby? I was just going to add real quick. Please let us know if this is helping you yes. because we do enjoy doing this because <sighs> we are, we talking to you. We're, we're growing as we talk to you, but we really, really want to know that we're helping you. We're here to do whatever we can do to, to help coach you along in your marriage, 
and, and help you to have that successful marriage that God created you to have, because we are all in this together. We are helpers one to another. And just to repeat again, this is real. Yeah. You can really be happy with your spouse and, and experience the love and the joy that God created marriage to be. Mm -hmm. You really can. Because like I said, we're living it. We're living it. And we growing. We yeah. growing in it. Closer and closer every day. We growing in it as we grow in God. Amen. Yeah. And so listen, if you'd like for us to uh, do a successfully us mm -hmm. seminar, your ministry, yeah. your city, your state, wherever you are. Yeah. Hit us up. Contact the reach. We'll, right. we'll come and uh, right. we'll share. We'll be we'll be honored to come and share with your congregation That's right. and your ministry, your team, or whatever the case may be. Don't matter how many it is, That's whether right. it be one hundred or one hundred thousand mm -hmm. people, we'll come. So and uh, and so let us know. Reach out to us and and uh, hit us up on Facebook mm -hmm. and uh, send us a message, and we will we will we will get back with you. Yeah. And uh, so again, appreciate you. Bless you. Be blessed. And remember, listen. The only way you can be successfully you and successfully us, you've got to learn to live as you was created. That's right. Now that you were born, born, you were born, you were created to be king and queen. You yes. were created as a chosen generation, a royal people. That's right. And, uh, but you got to believe in that and you got to yeah. pursue that. So thank yeah. you for joining us. We'll see y'all next time. Be blessed. Have a great weekend. Facebook. Good, good night and good weekend. <laughs> uh, everybody out there in Facebook land and uh, tell your friends and friends about the broadcast. And uh, tell them to go back and watch the replay. Yes. Be blessed. We'll see y'all next time.